Good morning and welcome to this week's video. I hope you guys are well. This week I'm in the Lincolnshire Wolds, I do believe, and more specifically, I'm just outside a village at the moment called Brinkhill. The reason I've come up this way today, I've actually come up for another reason. I'm going to do a little bit of wildlife photography, but that's for another vlog. But this morning, before I go off and do that, I decided to just pay a little visit to a couple of locations on the way up, one of them being here. And what specifically drew me to this place was there's a, a really cool sort of old derelict, I think, barn that's plonked right in the middle of a field. And the field has some fantastic contours to it and also some nice tractor lines. And I thought it might, might make for a really interesting shot. <music> So the sun's in at the moment, I'm just waiting for it to come back out because what I really want here is I want some light and dark on the land and I want the sun to, or the sunlight to emphasise the contours here that we've got. Uh, and I'm not bothered about the sky whatsoever, to be honest with you, because I'm not, the sky isn't in this shot at all. Uh, I don't want to overcomplicate the shot. It's basically just the barn, which is fairly central in the image, and then the contours with the, the lines of the tractor that are sort of leading off and that's all it is with this but the because it's so simple it needs light it needs light to to give some depth to it uh, and like I said to emphasize the contours it's really weird actually because I was driving up here and for the majority of the journey like all the way up to about 10 miles away it is completely flat so you just can see forever and I was looking thinking well I can't see how this is going to be. I can't see how this is, you know, how we're going to get this this shot because I saw it on Flickr and I couldn't really, you know, as I was driving up, I thought, well, there are no hills. How's it going to work? But um, yeah, with a, 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 as soon as you get about 10 miles out, it starts to get more hilly and it's it's really quite nice now. So yeah, it's good. Um, I was struggling, struggling this morning to get my words out. It's like really difficult. So if I sound a bit, everything sounds a bit sort of... Uh, 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 because I'm, uh, I don't know if I'm tired or just uh, just having a bit of difficulty today, I'm not sure. Now the forecast, the weather's forecast to be in and out today and that's exactly what I want because I'm kind of looking for some dramatic skies really a bit later on with some of the other shots possibly. Uh, but with this one, like I said, there's no sky at all. So I'm just waiting for that sun to pop out and give some contour to the land. <laughs> good hour and a bit later and I finally got to my second location I did go hunting for a tree uh, unfortunately I couldn't find it and I wanted to talk to you about that actually talk to you about the benefit of using the what three words app so um, basically this church here which is my second location St Botolph's Church 
uh, near Skidbrook, and the first location I was at, I used the What Three Words app to find it. So basically, it takes a little bit of work, but you can really narrow it down to exactly where you want to be. And the tree was sort of a last minute thing that I looked at last night and thought, oh yeah, let's see if we can get a lone tree in. Had a little look, got a location from Flickr, but unfortunately I didn't do my research well enough, spent quite a lot of time looking for it and couldn't find it. So if you don't have the What Three Words app, I would really recommend it for landscape photography. It really narrows it down because using the postcode often gives you quite a large area, whereas it's a little bit of extra work, but if you can, you know, really nail down exactly where you are, what three words, brilliant. Anyway, I've arrived here at this church and it's a fantastic place. It's, a, it's an old disused uh, church. I think it was last used in about the 1970s. And the outside's a little bit, uh, looks like it's been sort of rendered and a little bit of work's been done to it over the last sort of say 100 years or 50 years or so. But inside, it's still pretty much as was. And I'll, I'll take you in there now. It's just, um, it's just a shell of the church, but it's just fantastic. I love this sort of thing, you know me, I love old sort of architecture and uh, sort of a bit of decrepit stuff, and this is perfect. So um, I spotted this on, a, on Instagram. There was one of the people that I follow was doing a, a modeling shoot here. Um, and it looks like really good for that, that sort of gothic -y look. But uh, unfortunately, the only model here is me and I'm not gonna be in any of the shots. So I think what I need to do is start looking for some nice patches of light and some nice texture and see what I can find. So for my first shot in here, I'm concentrating on this arch and these windows and the pool of light that's thrown in the corner on the floor. Now, actually, I quite, I think I prefer it, weirdly enough, without the sunlight. So when there's sunlight, there's quite a harsh shadow that's being thrown on that floor. Um, but when the sun's in, it's much more diffused and I actually really prefer it like that. And I like that light. I think that light looks really nice. Now the dynamic range is huge because obviously we're inside. So in here to expose for the inside and all the details, I've got to shoot at 0.6 of a second. But to expose for the lights, the highlights, which are coming through the windows, I've got to shoot right down at 1 80th of a second. So what I'm having, actually having to do is to do two bracketed sequences, one at around a sixth of a second and then one at around 1 80th, or sorry, 0.6 of a second and one at around 1 80th of a second just to try and get a balance. And what I'll do is I'll blend those two together in post. But this is so, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's so atmospheric in here. It's actually really quite chilly and it's, uh, it's lovely, yeah. So that's the first shot. So uh, let's move on to another one. So what I've done now is I've come down to the far end here. I'm not sure what it's called, I don't know. Um, 
nave, is it? Pulpit, um, aisles, I don't know. I don't know. No, no, I'm not very good with churches. Anyway, um, come down to this end and I'm shooting a panoramic image. Uh, and it's about a five shot pano. And obviously there's gonna be some, some sort of uh, distortion caused by the fact that it's a, oh Christ, bird scarers, they've been going off. Still don't scare me as well, photography scarers. Um, yeah, uh, obviously there's going to be some distortion which we're going to have to fix in post. And the other thing which I can't do, unfortunately, is I can't expose for the outside as well as the inside when shooting a pano. When you're doing it, for some reason, it, it, it often doesn't marry up. And so uh, if you shoot two panos and then try to put them together, they usually don't work. Uh, if anyone knows how to do that, then you know, feel free to let me know because I'm just not sure about whether it's possible or not personally. Uh, I know you can HDR bracket and then put them together, but I don't like the look of that in Photoshop. So unfortunately, or fortunately, it might give an, an interesting look anyway. The outside's gonna be blown, <clears throat> but I might have caught it on the very lowest, um, the very, the most underexposed set of the brackets. I might be able to bring some of the detail back. I'm not sure. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna shoot a normal shot a normal landscape orientation shot of the same thing, but I won't be able to get such a sweeping, uh, a sweeping um, field of view in. So it'll just be a standard one. That's just in case the, uh, the panel doesn't work. And then I'll have a little look around for maybe some sort of close up intimate details with some light and shadows and textures. And I think that's probably gonna be about it. So I finished off in the church there with a few sort of close-up detail, intimate shots using the, the light and the shade and the texture and the lines. Uh, and I think they've worked out quite well. Well, I hope they have anyway. Um, so I'm done with that. I'll show you those in a second. But before I go, I just wanted to say that I'm planning to do another Q&A in a couple of weeks time. So if you've got any questions for me, please drop them down in the comments to either this video or next week's video. And everyone who asks me a question, I'll enter you into a drawer and we'll work out something to give away. It might be a print or I might find some piece of gear or something that I can give to you. So uh, yeah, please ask me questions. I'd really appreciate that. There'll be no Q and A without questions. I'll stick it on my Facebook page as well. I'll stick it on the channel or on the, in the community tab. Uh, and I'll also, um, put it on my Instagram but yeah if you've got anything that you want to ask you can always drop it in the comments below here anyway I hope you've enjoyed this week like I say stick around those images of the close-up stuff will be around at the end but I hope you've enjoyed this week I'm done here but I'm not done for today I've got somewhere else to go to which I'm really looking forward to and you'll see that hopefully next week um, but for now I'm going to go get something to eat chill out recharge some of my batteries metaphorically speaking and physically speaking, and I will see you all next time.